Thank you. Um, yeah, but I have no idea. Um, hey, Ron Hallenbach, can you hear me at all? Can you unmute? I can hear you. Well, leave it here, and if I have to, I will simply unplug this and just plug it back in. Here is a clicker, so they can, whoever can advance, so who's going to advance the slide? Okay, so you'll just sit here and advance? Sure. Okay, well, it'll just be rough, but we'll, we'll get through it. Because I, I, I'm about as novice on um, that as. Hey, uh, we need to test the. Can we're 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 just gonna we're gonna it's gonna be rough, but we'll get it done. Don't worry. No, I haven't got the email. I can go start and go back now. Slideshow, it's up to you. 
I can run this slideshow. What I don't, I need you up there to test the microphone. It works. Well, no, I don't know if it works here. I I need to know. No, I need to know online can they hear? Online can they hear? I need, I need somebody online. Sorry about this, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm back at the room. I need someone online to come yeah. offline and give yeah. me a thumbs up. Carrie, Susie, Ron, can you hear us? Okay, they say yes. So I will now. So, oops. Go for it. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Do we have anyone who has thoughts and prayers today? I know um, Christopher Gazelt is out, his brother is ill. So he may not be joining us today, but if you have any more thoughts, or is there anyone else that I know who is? Rod Slate. Rod Slate. So sorry about that. Well, again, Kate Brown, who is the main character of this. So welcome again. Um, and we have guests. Uh, Kelsey, you might want to read the guests first. Yes, yes, we have several guests in the club today. Um, Susan Carrick is a Christian Catholic member of the Christian Club.
Can you know that about yeah? Yeah. You know what you're saying that rotary song, the R O T A R Y song as soon as you get that up here. Sorry about that. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Sorry about that, folks. I got to go over you. Okay. What I would ask is uh, to recognize rotary as uh, a
As Jean spoke about last week, we are starting a fundraiser for the holiday basket. And there are handouts waiting on the table for more information. Um, and there is a buyout option too if you don't want to help your friends to buy a wreath for this holiday season. So you can choose the uh, buyout option or you can definitely sell as many as you like. In order to make that by October 15th, you can see all the events you will be holding on. This time, I will introduce Rob. My introduction is a little different, but we're going with it. Alka, our district governor, is here. Come on up. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that very, very warm welcome. And truly, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here amongst all of you. And uh, uh, this, uh, as much as I think we are all inspired here in this room, there's so much of positive energy. And thank you so much for all that you all do. But uh, having said that, we had some technical issues. So I was just busy uh, with that little bit of the background. But uh, once again, uh, a little bit about my background. Uh, originally, I come from India, and uh, I had the opportunity of studying in India, English. And my dream was always to study in America. So I came here to do my grad school in computation and post-grad studies as well. Uh, I'm joined here uh, by my husband, with my husband here. So his uh, name is Kiran Tunnelford, and uh, he is a ER director of Blessings Hospital in Kielda. Uh, we have three um, daughters, two of them are in Chicago, and uh, one uh, is in, at home right now. Uh, she uh, is a graduate of NYU, and she's a filmmaker. And the other two are a data manager and a lawyer. So this is a little bit of our background. But we love being here in Iowa and uh, the community. It's been about 20 years, and uh, we enjoy being here uh, all these years. So coming to our presentation, but also I'd like to recognize uh, our uh, very distinguished. Uh, a group of members here who are present here, uh, CDC Susan Harris, uh, and she's our AG coordinator also for our district 6000, and Mr. Park Hulu, our AG, newly appointed, who has stepped in. Uh, so thank you for doing that. Uh, if you belong to a local grocery club, you automatically belong to the world of grocery. What I mean by that is if you're traveling or if you're in another uh, country or you meet another repairing from another part of the world, you're automatically welcome and you feel a immediate uh, uh, a connection with being a part of the Rotary family. Rotary is like an extended family. Just like Rotary, our organization has its grassroots in different parts of the world of making a difference of doing good and serving humanity. And it's just wonderful to be a part of this great organization. And uh, with its uh, financial stewardship or whatever we get the foundation, we you know that the charity manager for the past year had a five-star rating all throughout, and all the money that we are donating to the foundation is going to a good cause and making a difference 
for different needs that are there locally and globally as well. Now, to make it a little more interactive, I'd love to have your participation as well. So, uh, we are all talking about six areas of focus, right? Yeah. There's been a new area of focus uh, last year, uh, from this year actually. So, could anyone share with me uh, what is the new area of focus that's been added on for this? Uh, this time, anyone? The environment, absolutely correct. And when you think about the environment, you see that everyone has become so conscious about what, uh, 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 how we should protect the environment, whether it's climate change, and uh, we have been uh, seeing this on a daily basis, whether it's in Haiti or uh, it's in another part of the world. The mother nature is mighty powerful. And uh, we have to protect our environment, not only for our generation, but for the future generation. Because every future comes. So anything we can do to protect our environment, whether it's planting of trees or removal of plastic or taking out uh, the toxic waste that's in our river system, lakes, beaches, is just uh, everything that we can do, let's do it now. Let's not wait for tomorrow because we're already late. So I think uh, involving and doing these uh, projects, uh, there are a number of global grants uh, that have been uh, available for doing this. So partnering with other countries or districts uh, can be wonderful uh, to do. Uh, just the other, other. One. So the other day, uh, Japan, the uh, club in Japan, uh, did this initiative, this uh, worldwide, to clean up the beaches. And I happened to be in Chicago that day, and um, so I just went to the uh, Lakeshore Beach, and I, to my surprise, I found the Northwest University students there as well, doing this on the same mission. So I think there has been a very conscious effort to protect our environment. And just in one hour we collected I collected all these things and each one of us did so. So you can see how much damage we are doing just uh, you know on a day to day basis. So I don't think we have to wait for Earth Day or any other day to do something like this. Every day if you make this a conscious effort on our part to protect our environment, it will be great. And uh, I'm going uh, to do a district wide initiative in the month of October. Uh, anything that you would like to do for protecting the environment, we are, I know uh, there, I met uh, with the board members today earlier, and uh, I think on 9th of October, they will be planting some trees. So that's a great initiative. And then we do it district wide. I was three clubs, four clubs are getting together and planting for 100 trees. So, this year, uh, anyone uh, know the name of our RI uh, president for this year? So, incidentally, he's from India too. Yes, uh, Mr. Shekhar Mehta and Rashi Mehta. If you read his bio, I mean, these, uh, both of them have dedicated and committed their lives to service and giving back to the global community and our, to the global world. He has been able to come to Edmonton now and he's touring Nigeria, Ghana, right down to Edmonton in uh, Prague. So um, they are role models of what community service means. His mantra is service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on planet Earth. When you read it, it is very simple and appealing, but it has such a deep impact. As a hotel, I think service is something a part of our DNA. We do not expect anything in return when we do service, but we find it very intrinsically very rewarding to do something, to give back to our communities, local communities, and the global world. The need today is so apparent as you see 
very challenging times. There is so much of need to do good in our world and making a difference. As you can see, the best way to find yourself is to use yourself in the service of others. And I thank you all, each one of you, for doing that. Because I know this club has done a lot. And I heard from the board members what we've been doing even during the pandemic times. You have not stepped down in your role of giving back to your community and to us, the global world. The Tanzania project, I can't say enough about it. You have made a whole lot of difference. I mean, to humanity, they are able to get elections. Getting water. I see that Bear Mountain now is just a different way of uh, there are communities living on that mountain, and it's just a beautiful thing to see. The goal. Uh, Rotary International has uh, it's pretty exciting, and uh, we have to call it uh, after some action plan. And the four pillars of the strategic plan that they have are in fact um, expanding our reach, engagement, adaptability, and flexibility. Now, when you think about impact, what comes to your mind in terms of a disease that we are uh, eradic trying to eradicate from our world? Can anyone share with me? This is the disease that we are trying to eradicate from our planet. And polio, absolutely right. We are this close to ending polio from our uh, world. There are only two endemic countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And I think this year they say that there are only been two cases. So we cannot stop our efforts now. We have to double our efforts because we cannot, because that is not only our right focus as the primary focus for eradicating polio from our world, we cannot shift it to any other area. Why? Because it's a plain right away. We do not want it to resurface in any part of the world. We cannot have it come back to uh, uh, any of the children that are affected by it. We have to save their lives. 50 cents can save a child's life. I had the opportunity to participate in an NID uh, um, trip that went to India. The NID stands for National Immunization Day, where we put the drops, two drops of polio drops, into the child's mouth. And that saved the child's life. We cannot even express it in words. I know Susan also has done a trip to Africa. And those of us, or anyone else who has been in the region, has been on an NID. I know uh, Mr. Ray Martin from your club has, but it's just something that you cannot express in words. I'd like to share with you a little story, which is not a story, but it's real. There was this, we were taken to the slum area, and we were in a different room. There was this lady who came running and looked her, and she said, my nephew, save my nephew, please come and see him. And we couldn't, of course, leave our groups. We were told not to leave our groups. But we went to the local leader and approached the, it was like a little courtyard. And there was this boy who was about 10 years old. He was sitting on a choir bed. And he had this blind look on his face. He was completely paralyzed and he had to be carried from the Inside the home, and everything had to be done for him. They told us his father had passed away a week ago, and his mother was in mourning, and he was the only breadwinner of the family. They wanted us to see this child, make him better, stand on his feet. We, of course, we were there for a short time, and we asked the local rotary club there to please do everything they could for this boy. So that is just one of the examples. There are so many examples like this. I have the opportunity of going to Ghana and doing the sub national day projects there as well. And you see there is a need not only there but all over the world. Today's children, 
they are not familiar with polio as much as they are familiar with they can relate to cancer and other diseases. But if you get a chance, I we do we go to the school, we go to their health class, talk to them about polio. And they are completely they can't believe that this is happening before in our own country here. So the impact from 320,000 people, we are now less than a, less than 100, or this year we are hearing it in school. So anything that we can do to create this lasting impact. Next one is expanding our reach. Expanding our reach is, I know many of the clubs have shared this with us that they want to increase their membership. Each one bring one as one of the initiatives which Mr. Shaker Mehta is promoting for us all to do in our clubs. He says it's for the last 30 so many years we are hearing that the membership is about 1.2 million and it stayed there at that number. He wants us to increase it to 1.3 million in increase of 10 percent. And if how can we do that? He says one of us brings one new member into our club, we can achieve that goal. So each one brings one. It's not only the membership shares responsibility for bringing in a new member, but let's take it upon us, all of us. Why don't we want to do this? Someone gave the gift of glory to us. Why don't we want our best friend to be in this year as well? So we'd love to uh, get new members in our club. With new members, you increase the platform of volunteers, you get a more number of exchange of ideas, and of course, diversity, equity, and inclusion. You have a reflection of your community as in your clubs. So it's wonderful to have a diverse group of members in our clubs, and I'm seeing that here. And thank you for uh, congratulations. To Brad and uh, uh, for joining uh, the Inclusive Club. Let's make the new members feel valued, welcome, and loved. And see what their passion is, what their, uh, they would like to do in the Inclusive Club as well. Let them do the project as well. Give them the opportunity. So let's increase membership. We can start new clubs. You can start satellite clubs, you can start cosmic clubs, passport clubs, you can start a club uh, for education, for promoting literacy. So, Naveda, I think, has started a club for downtown Naveda. Boone has started a club for promoting literacy. They have educators. So, they meet at a different time. It's not that we are losing members, but we are gaining members. So, that's a new way of uh, reaching out. Include your rotor actors, interacting youth exchange students in your projects. RI wants us to have a rotor actor on our committee as representatives so that we can participate in their projects, they can participate in our projects. So it's wonderful to have this pool of uh, young volunteers as well who are very much action oriented. They like to dive into projects and do the work. So, and young professionals also. I know I had this year for Ryla, we had a student who is attending ISU. Uh, she was on my team, and uh, she is an amazing team leader. And she wants to start a Rotor Act Club here for, uh, uh, and, uh, at ISU. So, we will be seeing the Rotor Act that we next time next month, and we want to have them also here. Engagement. Uh, I think your club is uh, one that is a role model for engagement. You do virtual uh, hybrid meetings. I've been attending many of yours last year, and I'm just very impressed with all that you're doing and keeping. And I think you have some social meetings also, and uh, wonderful keep that going. And uh, the last one, adaptability and flexibility. Uh, you move from the gate to gate here. These challenging times, we have to be adaptable and flexible. Change, uh, we have to move with the change that is coming upon us. And uh, uh, we 
have done that here, you could have seen that. So anything you can continue doing it uh, in that aspect can be great. For the uh, sorry, the district votes also. Oh, so this is just an example of our district house. We have a statue uh, for the main building uh, at our children's hospital in the north. And uh, you can see how involved and uh, we are with the uh, polio eradication. And the bottom list the number of people who have gone and attended the finale. And that's it. So, where does the 150 million dollars uh, go, which you contribute for the polio fundraiser? Uh, I just looked at some zones. So this slide is presented to us for 2021. 2021. 20, so, 39% goes for the children, the vaccine, uh, then 19% goes for the actual vaccine, 3% goes to the um, experts. And then, that 
independence of being self reliant and being able to stand in a role in the Microfinancing is another way of doing it. Uh, so, in other parts of the world. So, anything you can do to empower the during this pandemic, many of our own, um, the ladies, um, women had to drop out from their work. So, training uh, to uh, start their careers again, anything that we can do there. So, think of new ideas that we can do to empower girls.
So I hope you all are coming. That is the fun. And thank you. No peace. Yeah, that table just left out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you. 
your leadership coming up. Best of good we held in Rochester next year uh, at uh, the Prairie uh, uh, Briar Lake, sorry. And it's going to be on 24th and 26th of February. And uh, so that it's going to be virtual as well uh, on the virtual platform. So I'd uh, love to uh, have all of you come. And I shared the other dates of different events uh, with our board here. So if there are any questions for me, a little trip when is um, World Peace Day? It's coming up. Yes, it is. Yay, tomorrow. <laughs> and yes, and uh, we sent a number of things that one should do. There's a moment of silence. So just uh, keeping all our uh, uh, first responders and our uh, veterans and uh, Marines and everyone who has done so much uh, for us uh, in this pandemic and have done and uh, when uh, is uh, polio world polio day? October 24th. October, yes. 24th. 24th. Oh, of course. He's our district chair for polio also. So, October 24th. And so, would you like to say anything? which is the week prior to Thanksgiving. And we have one to Yeah. And yeah, I, even if there is a local uh, store here, grocery store like Heidi or any grocery, uh, uh, I know my batch mates are doing donuts. They are making them for purple colors and they are taking it to their offices. There, all the money goes to uh, that's one idea. Then the world, uh, what's it? World, uh, world meal plan. Like if you're celebrating a special occasion in your family, like a birthday or just getting together, you can match it up uh, with your contribution and uh, send it to the foundation and uh, be recognized. Yeah, thank you. So, anything that we can do with that, then we do another a few other ideas that we share. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, so we have a And the bag.
I'm getting there.